Despite the tender camera that across Bro gave him, despite the education he received at their loving hands, he's too much nature and little nurture. Master, I have welcomed you to my island, led you to its secret fountain, found you a spirit to command, attempted too much work to maintain you, and in turn we have taught you to speak, put reason in you, look past your monstrous form, and welcomed you to society. What more do we owe you that you have not already received? The island is mine own possession. It was Sycorax's first, and with her passing, it becomes mine. I give you thanks for holding it until my maturity, but now I will take up what rightfully belongs to me, master of the island, and sovereignty over its inhabitants. Mastery, what means such sovereignty to you? Would you have me conjure such fantastic displays of power for your fancy? I mean to have Miranda for my wife. Aww. Aww. Poor Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> as my own wife. Stand aside, old man. Your daughter is mine now. You shall not pass. Queen, <laughs> base, monster, half devil, Miranda is not thine, nor is master of the island. Set a boss, curse Spirit, you. Find him. <laughs> what you would claim through force, I deny you by force. For your vile treachery against those who have only done you good, I shall inflict such pains on you, create such menial tasks. You shall suffer for your violence and ingratitude. wise sage indeed, but this still does not unravel the mystery of your liberty. Here you stand free, freer than puff. Now then, do you finally gain your liberty? Remember Alonzo, the king of Naples, who helped Antonio to soak Milan? It so happened that Prospero's enemies were sailing through the waters very near the island. An opportunity to avenge himself, Prospero could not pass up, and so he ordered me to conjure a violent
love when she dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer. A brain vessel who had, no doubt, some noble creature in her, dashed all to pieces. Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor souls, they perish. Had I been in the god of power, I would have sunk the sea within the earth. Or ere it should the good ship have swallowed, and the froth and soul within her. Be collected, no more amazement. Tell your piteous heart, there's no harm done. Oh, woe the day! No harm! I have done nothing but in care of thee, of thee, my dear one, thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know, did never meddle with my thoughts. Tis time I should inform thee farther. Lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me. So, wipe thou thine eyes. The direful spectacle of the wreck, which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee, I have so safely ordered that there is no soul, no, not so much perdition as a hair, fit to any creature in that vessel, which thou heardest cry, which thou sawest sing. Sit down, for thou must now know further. You have often begun to tell me what I am, but stopped, and left me to a bootless inquisition, concluding stay, not yet. The hour is now come, the very minute bids thee. Hast thou remember a time before we came into this cell? I do not think thou canst, for then was thou not out ten years, three years. Certainly, sir, I can. By what? By any other house or person? The image, tell me, that I kept with thy remembrance. Tis far off, and rather like a dream than a shed that my remembrance more. Had I not four or five women once that came to me? Thou hast, and more, Miranda. How is it that this lives on in thy mind? What seest thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time? If thou rememberest aught ere thou camest here, how thou camest here thou mayest. But that I do not. Twelve years since, Miranda, twelve years since, thy father was the Duke of Milan and the Prince of Power, and thou his only heir, and the princess of no worse issue. By foul play, when we keep hence, but blessedly called Pippin. My brother and thy uncle, call then to me, I pray thee, mark me, that a brother should be so perfidious. He who next thyself, of all the world I love, and to him put the manage of my state, as at a time, through all the signories, it was the first, and Prospero, the prime duty, being so reputed in dignity, and for the liberal arts, without a parallel. Those being all my study, the government I cast upon my brother, and to my state, through stranger, being transported and wrapped in secret study. I, thus neglecting worldly ends, all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind, with that which, but by being so retired, poor prize all popular rate in my false brother, awakened evil nature, and my trust, like a good parent, did to get it in a falsehood in its contrary, as great as my trust was, which had indeed no limit, a confidence sends not. He, being thus lorded, not only with what my revenue yielded, but what my power might else exact, like one who, having into truth by telling of it, made such a sinner of his memory to credit his own lie, he did believe he was indeed the duke. Out of the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative, hence his ambition growing to have no screen between this part he played and him he played it for. He needs will be absolute malign. Me, poor man, my library was duped him large enough. Of temporal royalties, he thinks me now incapable. Confederates, so dry he was persuaded with the King of Naples to give him annual tribute, to do him homage. Subject his coronet to his crown, and bend the kingdom yet unbowed. Alas, poor Milan, the most ignoble stupid. Mark his condition and the event, then tell me if this might be a brother. Now, the condition, the King of Naples, being an enemy to me and better, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of the premises of homage, and I know not how much tribute should presently extricate me, and mine out of the kingdom, and confer fair reward with all the honors on my brother, whereon a treacherous army levied, one midnight, faded to the purpose, did Antonio open the gates of Milan, and in the dead of darkness, the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self. 
In a few, they hurried us aboard a bark, or some leaks to sea where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat. Not rig, tackle, sail, nor mast. The very rats instinctively had quit it. There they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us, to sigh to the winds, whose pity, sighing back again, did us but loving wrong. Thou wast that did preserve me. Thou didst smile infused with the fortitude from heaven. When I had decked the sea with rocks full salt under my birth and groan, which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue. How came we ashore? By providence divine. Some food we had, and some fresh water, that a noble Neapolitan, Gonzalo, being then appointed master of this design, did give us. And knowing I loved my books, out of his gentleness, he furnished me with volumes of mine own library that I prize above my dukedom. Would I might but ever meet that man. Now I arise. Sit still and hear the last of our sea sorrows. Here in this island we arrive, and here have I, thy schoolmaster, may be more profit than other princesses can, that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful. The heavens thank you for it, and now I pray you, sir, for it's still too beating in my mind, your reason for reigning the sea storm. Know thus far forth, by accident most strange, gospel of fortune, now my dear lady, hath mine enemy brought to this shore. And by my prescience I now find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star, whose influence, if now I court, not but omit, my fortunes will ever after droop. Here cease more questions. Thou art inclined to sleep. Tis a good dullness. Give it way. I know that must not you. Come away, servant, come. I am ready now. Approach, my Ariel, come. Oh, hail, great master, great sir, hail. I come to answer thy best pleasure, be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, to ride on the curled clouds, to thy strong bidding task, Ariel, and all for quality. Hast thou, spirit, performed to point the tempest that I bade thee? to every article. I boarded the king's ship, now on the beak, now on the deck, the waist, in every cabin would I flame amazement. Sometimes I would divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, the yards and bowsprit would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightnings, the precursors of the dreadful thundercraps, more momentary and sight outrunning were not. The fire and cracks of sulphurous roaring, the most mighty Neptune seemed to be siege and make his bold waves tremble. Yea, his dread trident shake. My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant, that this tr trouble would not infect his reason? Not a soul, but felt a fever of the mad and played some tricks of desperation. All but the mariners plunged into the foaming brine and quit the vessel. Then all of fire with me, the king's son, Ferdinand, with hair upstaring. Then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, cried, Hell is empty, and all the devils are here. Why, well, that's my spirit. But was not this nigh short? Close by, my master. But are they, Ariel, safe? Not a hair perished, on their sustaining garments not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou badest me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, who I left cooling of the air with sighs and sitting in an odd angle of the isle, his arms in this side <coughs> not. Of the king's ship, the mariners say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbor is the king's ship, in the deep nook where once thou callest me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still vexed vermouths. There she said. The mariners all under hatches stowed, who, with a charm joined to their suffered labor, I have left asleep. And as for the rest of the fleet, they all are met again upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples, supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed. But there is more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses, the time twit six, and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Since thou hast given me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now? Moody, what is it thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out, no more! I pray thee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistakings, serve without grudge or grumbling. Thou hast promised to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and thinkest it much. Tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing. Hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sure, in Argier. Oh, was she so? 
I must once in a month recount what thou hast been, which thou forgettest. This damned which sick rats, for mischief manifold and sorcery is terrible. From our year, thou knowest, was banished. For one she, thing she did, they would not take her life. Is that not true? Aye, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with a child, and here was left by the sailors. <laughs> thou, as thou reportest thyself, was then servant. And for thou wast a creature too delicate to act, for earthly and abhorred command, refusing her grain tests, she did confine thee, by help of her more potent ministers, into a cloven pine, within which brick thou didst painfully remain a dozen years. There that didst thou vent thy groans as fast as no wheels strike. Then was this island, save for that son she did litter here, a freckled wealth hag born, not honored with the human shape. Yes, Caliban her son. Dull thing, I say so. He, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service. <laughs> thou best knowest what form I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breast of ever angry bear. It was a torment to lay upon the doomed, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was my mark. When I arrived and found thee, let thee up. Thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I'll rend an oak and peg thee in his naughty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. Do so. And in two days I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go and make thyself like a nymph of the sea, be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball of us. Go, take this shape and hither come in it, hence with diligence. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. The strangeness of your story is like heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on. We'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Tis a villain, sir. I do not love to look on. But as it is, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices to profit us. What ho, slave, Caliban, thou earth, thou, speak. There's more than enough within. Come forth, I say. There's other business for thee. <coughs> Come, thou tortoise, when? Poisonous slave, got my devil himself. <coughs> Upon thy wicked dam, come forth. This wicked dew is there, my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome fen. Drop on you, foe. A southwest blowing ye, blister you all o'er. For this, be sure, thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath. Urchins shall, for that vast of night that they may work, all exercise on thee. Thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb. Each pinch more stinging than bees that made them. I must eat my dinner. The silence mine by Sidrax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, strokes me, and makes much of me. But see me water with berries in it. If thou have any bigger light, and how the less that burn by day and night, and then I love thee, and show thee all the qualities of the isle. The fresh spring, bright bits, fair place, and fertile. Curse be I that did so! All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. Burn all the subjects that you have when first was mine own king. And here you stye me on this rock whilst you do keep from me the rest of the isle. For it, slave, which any print of goodness will not take, being capable of all ill. I pity thee, took pains to make thee speak. Taught thee each hour one thing or another when thou didst not, savage. Know thine own meaning, but would gabble like a thing most brutish. I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known. Thy vile race, though thou didst learn, had that in it which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, that did deserve more than a prison. You taught me your language. My profit on it is that I know how to curse. The red clay frees you for learning me your language. Hey, seed hence. That just a feel like the clay. Shruggest thou now, and if thou neglectest, or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, spill all thy bones. Make thee more than beasts shall tremble at thy death. Oh, prithee, I must obey. His artist has such power who control my dam as God set up us to make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence. The fringe curtain of thine eye advance, and say what thou seest yon. What is it? A spirit? Lord, how it looks about. Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form, but tis a spirit. No wench, it eats and sleeps and hath such senses as we have. Such, this gallant which thou seest was in the wreck, and but he's something stained with grief. That's beauty's tanker. 
Thou mightest call him a goodly fellow. He has lost his fellow, the strange about to find him. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. Take a bond, I see, as my soul prompts it. Tell it to where I'll set thee free within two days for this. Most sure, the goddess on whom these heirs attend, vouchsafe my prayer, may know if you remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give, or I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is will you wonder if you be maid or no? No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language! Heavens! I'm the best of them that speak this speech. Were I but where tis spoken, how the best? What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? Single thing, as I am now. The marvels to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does, I weep. Myself am Naples, who with mine eyes never since it ebb beheld the king, my father, death. Alack, for mercy! Yes, faith in all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his brave son being twain. The Duke of Milan is more brave a daughter than now control the after it the year. First sight they have changed eyes. Spirit, fine spirit, I'll set thee free for this. A word! Here you have done yourself some wrong, a word. Why speaks my father so evidently? This is the third man that I have saw, the first that I have sighed for. Pity move my father to be inclined my way. Oh, you wonder. If your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Soft, sir, one word more. I charge thee, that thou attend me. Thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not. Thou hast put thyself on, it, on this island as a spy to win it from me, the lord on it. No, as I am a man. There's no good thing that can dwell in such a temple. If the ill spirit have so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell with it. Speak not for him. He's a traitor. Come, I'll man manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea water shalt thou drink, and thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots and husks were in the corn cradle. Follow. No. I will resist such entertainment till my enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he is gentle and not fearful. Put my foot, my tutor. Put up thy sword, traitor, who makest a show but darest not strike. Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. Come from thy war, for I can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop. Beseech you, father! Hence, hang not upon my garments. Sir, have pity, I will be his surety. What, an advocate for an impostor? Thou thinkest there are no more such shapes as he, having seen but him and Caliban. To the most of men, this is a Caliban, and they to him are angels. My affections are then most equal. I have no ambition to meet a goodlier man. Come on, obey. Thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigor in them. So they are. My spirits, as in a dream, are all bound up. Father's loss, weakness which I feel, this man's threats to whom I'm subdued, are but light to me. Might I, but through my prison, once a day behold this maid. All corners else are the earth, but liberty make you so. Space enough have I in such a prison. It works. Follow me. Be of comfort, sir. My father is of a better nature than he fears my speech. This is what one who is now painful. Some sailor's wife, the masters of the merchant, and the merchant have just our theme of woe. But for the miracle, I mean our preservation. Few and millions can speak like us. Then wisely, good sir, wear our sorrow with our comfort. For the peace. He receives comfort like cold porridge. The visitor will not give him more so. Look how he's winding up the watch of his day. Fine, fine, let's start. Sir, one tell? When every grief is entertained that's offered, there comes to the entertainer a dollar. Delore comes in indeed. You have spoken truer than you purpose. And you have taken it wiselier than I meant you should. Therefore, my lord, fie, what a spendthrift is he in his tongue. I prithee, spare. I have done, but yet he will be talking. Which, appear, Adrian, for a good wager, first begins to crow. He will cock. The cockerel. Done. The wager? A laughter. A match. Though this island seem to be desert. How so you paid? Uninhabitable and almost inaccessible. Yet? Yet? He could not miss it. It must needs be of subtle, tender, delicate temperance. Temperance was a delicate lass. Aye, and as subtle as he most learnedly delivered. 
The air breathes upon us here most sweetly. As if it had lungs and rotten ones. <laughs> or as for perfumed by a fen. Here is everything advantageous to life. True. Save means to live. Of that there's none, or little. How lush and lusty the grass looks. How green. The ground indeed is tawny. With an eye of green in it. He misses not much. No, he doth but mistake the truth totally. But the rarity of it is, as is indeed almost beyond credit. As many vouched rarities are. That our garments being as they were drenched in the sea, hold notwithstanding their freshness and glossiness, being rather new dyes and stained with salt water. If the one of his pockets could speak, would it not say he lies? Aye, uh, or very false in pocket of his report. He thinks our garments were as fresh as when he first put them on in Africa. The marriage of the king's fair daughter Clarabel to the king of Tunis. Twas a sweet marriage, and we prosper well in our return. Tunis was never graced before with such a paragon to their queen. Uh, not since Widow Dido's time. Widow? A pox of that. How came that widow in? Widow Dido. What if he had said widow or Aeneas, too? Widow Dido said you. You make me study of that. She was of Carthage, not of Tunis. This Tunis, sir, was Carthage. Carthage? I assure you, Carthage. His mouth is more than the wondrous harp. He hath raised the walls and houses, too. What impossible matter will he make easy next? I think he will carry this island home in his pocket and bring it his son for an apple. And, sowing the kernels of it in the sea, bring forth more islands. Aye. Why, in good time. Sir, we were talking that our garments seem as fresh as only more than your daughter's marriage. And the, and the rarest that ever came there. Be, I beseech you, Widow Dido. Oh, Widow Dido. Aye, Widow Dido. Is not my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? In a sort. That sort was well fished for. At your daughter's wedding? You cram these words into my ears against my, the stomach of my sense. Would I have never married my daughter there? For coming thence, I have lost my son, and in my rage, she too, who is so far removed from Italy that I ne'er shall see her again. O thou, mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made us meal on thee? Sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him and ride upon their backs. He trod the water, whose enmity he flung aside, and breasted the surge most swollen that met him. His bold head felt the contentious waves he kept, and oared himself with good arm and lusty stroke to the shore. Then o'er his wayworn bases bowed, and stooping to relieve him, I doubt not he made it alive to land. No, oh, no, he is gone. Sir, I feel we have lost your son forever. Milan and Naples have more widows of this, mis this business making than we bring men to comfort them. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of the loss. My lord Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness and time to speak it in. You rub the sore when you should bring the plaster. Very well. And the boast for urgently. It is foul weather in us all, sir, when you are potty. Foul weather? Very foul. Had I a plantation on this isle? He'll sow it with nettle seed. Or docks or mallet. And were the good king on it? He being drunk for want of wine. In the commonwealth, I would by contraries execute all things. For no kind of traffic would I admit. Letters should not be known, no name of magistrate, no sovereign. Yet you would be king on it. The latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavor. Treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or need of any engine would I admit. But that nature should bring forth of its own, all poison, all abundance, to feed my innocent people. God save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. And do you mark me, sir? Prithee, no more. Thou dost talk nothing to me. Was you we laughed at. And I, in this kind of merry fooling, am nothing to you. So continue and laugh at nothing still. What a blow was there given! I had not fallen a flat long. You are gentlemen of brave metal. You would but lift the moon out of her sphere if she would but continue in it five weeks without changing. We would so, and then go a bad fowling. Good, my lord, be not angry. I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. But you laugh me asleep, for I am very heavy. Go sleep and hear us. What? Also soon asleep? I wish that mine eyes would, with themselves, shut up my thoughts. I find them inclined to do so. Please you, sir, do not admit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow, and when it does, it is a comforter. We too, my lord. Well, guard your person while you take your rest, and watch your safety. Thank you. One more sir. What that strange drowsiness possesses them? It is the quality of the climate. Why doth it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to slumber. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all as by consent. They dropped as by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sebastian, oh, what might? No more. And yet, methinks I see in thy face, that thou shouldst be, and my strong imagination begins to see a crown dropping upon thy head. What, art thou waking? 
Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language, and thou speakest out of your sleep. What is it thou dost say? Did the stranger pose to be asleep, with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep? Noble Sebastian, thou lets thy fortune sleep, die rather, winks whilst thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctively, there is meaning in thy snoring. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too, if heed me. Which to do trebles the oar. Prithee, say on the setting of that eye, and she proclaim a matter to me, and a birth indeed that throws thee much to yield. Thus, sir, although this lord of weak remembrance, this, who shall be as of little memory when he's heard, hath here almost persuaded, for he's a spirit of persuasion, only professes to persuade, the king, his son's alive. Tis as impossible he's undrowned, and he that sleeps here swims. There's no hope of him undrowned. Oh, out of that no hope, what great hope have you? No hope. That way is another way so high a hope that even ambition cannot pierce a wing beyond. But doubt discovery there. Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned? He's gone. Then, tell me, who is the next heir of Naples? Well, Clara. She that is queen of Tunis. She that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life. She that from Naples can have no note, unless the sun were post, the man in the moon's too slow, till newborn chins be rough and razorable. She that, from whom, we all were seized swallow, though some cast again, and by that destiny to perform an act wrought what's past is prolonged, what to come is yours and my discharge. What stuff is this? How say you? Tis true, my brother's daughter is queen of Tunis, so is she heir of Naples, twixt with regions there is some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out, How shall that Clarabelle measure us back to Naples? Keep in Tunis, and let Sebastian wait. Say it is for death that now that sees them. Why, they are no worse than now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. Lords that can prate as amply and necessarily as this Gonzalo. I myself could make a trough of his deep chat. Oh, if you have bore the mind that I do, what sleep were this for your advancement? Do you understand me? He thinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I do remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True, and look how well my garments sit upon me, much feeder than before. <laughs> my brother's servants were then my fellows, now they are my men. But for your conscience. Aye, sir, where lies that? If Torquag would put me to my slipper, but I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciences that stand twixt me and Milan, candied be they, and melt ere they molest. Here lies your brother, no better than the earth he lies upon. If he were that which now he's like, that's dead whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it, can lay to bed forever, whilst you, doing thus to perpetual wing for I, might put this ancient morsel, this Sir Prudence, who should not For all the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. They'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour. Thy case, dear friend, shall be my precedent, as thou goest, Molan, I'll come by Naples. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest, and neither king shall love thee. Draw together, and when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall on Gonzalo. Oh, what a word. <laughs> my master through his art foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in, and sends me forth, for else his project dies, to keep them living. While you here do snoring lie, open-eyed conspiracy this time doth take. If of life you keep a care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake, awake. Then let us both be sudden. Good angels preserve the king. Oh, no, no. Oh, awake! Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? <laughs> While well, we stood here securing your repose, even now we heard a wild burst of bellowing, like bulls or rather wines. <laughs> Did not wake you? It struck me near most terribly. I heard nothing. <laughs> oh, t'was a din to fright a monster's ear, to make an earthquake. Sure as the roar of a whole herd of lions. <laughs> heard you this, Consolo? By my honor, I heard a humming, and that a strange one, too, which should awake me. I shook you, sir, and cried. And opening my eyes, I saw their weapons drawn. There was a noise, that's barely. This best we stand upon our guard that we quit this place. Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this ground, and let us make further search for my poor son. Heavens keep him from these beasts, for he is sure in the island. Lead away. Prospero, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, king, go safely on to seek thy son. Infections that the sun sucks up from bogs, fens, flats, on prosper fall and make him by inch meal a disease. 
His spirits hear me, yet I needs must curse. But they'll nor pinch, fright me with urchin shows, pitch me in the mire, nor lead me, like a firebrand in the dark, out of my way, unless he bid him. But for every trifle are they set upon me, some time like apes that bow and chatter and after bite me, some time am I all wound up with adders, or with their cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Lo now, lo, here comes a spirit of his and to torment me for green wooden fully. I'll fall flat, perchance he will not mind me. There's neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all. Another storm brewing, I hear it sing in the wind. Yon same black cloud, yon huge one. Looks like a foul bombard that would shed us liquor. Now if it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose but fall by pailfuls. And what have we here? A man or a fish? <laughs> Dead or alive? Oh, oh, fish! It smells like a fish! Very ancient and a fish-like smell. Kind of not of the news fortune. Now were I in England, as once I was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday fool there but would give a piece of silver. There would this monster make a man. Any strange beast there makes a man. We will not give a doit to relieve a lame beggar. We'll lay the up ten to see a dead Indian. We'll legged like a man, and fins like arms. Warm on my troll. I do not let loose my former opinion. <coughs> Hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander that has lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Alas, the storm has come again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. His reacquaints a man with strange bedfellows. Well, here shroud until the dregs of the storm be passed. <laughs> I shall no more to sea, to sea. Here shall I die ashore. This is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Well, here's my comfort. The master, the swabber, the boatswain and I, the gunner and his mate, loved Maul, Meg, and Mary, and Marjorie, but none of us cared for Kate. For she had a tongue with a tang, would cry to a sailor, go hang. She loved not the savor of tar nor of pitch, yet the tailor might scratch her where she did itch. Then to sea, boys, and let her go hang. This is a scurvy tune, too. <laughs> here's my comfort. Do not torment me. Oh. What's the matter? Have we devils here? You put tricks upon us with savages and men of end, huh? I have not escaped drowning to be a fear now of your four legs. <laughs> For it hath been said, this proper man has ever went on four legs, cannot make him give ground. And so it shall be said again while Stefano breathes at his nostrils. The spirit torments me. Oh. This is some monster of the isle with four legs who hath got, as I take it, an egg here. <laughs> Where the devil should he learn our language? <laughs> I will give him some relief, if it be but for that. If I can keep him tame and recover him and get to Naples with him, it will be a present for any emperor that ever trod on each other. Do not torment me, prithee. I'll bring my wood home faster. He's in his fit now and does not talk after the wisest. He shall taste of my bottle. He have never drunk wine afore. We'll go near to remove his fit. If I can recover him and keep him tame, I will not take too much for him. For he shall pay for him that hath him, and that soundly. Thou dost me yet a little hurt, if thou wilt anon. I know it by thy trembling. Crossbow works upon me. Come on your ways. Open your mouth. Here's that which will give language to you, cat. Open your mouth. This will shake your shaking, I can tell you, and not soundly. Open your mouth. You cannot tell who's your friend. Open your chaps again. I should know that voice. That should be. No, but he's drowned, and these are but devils. Oh, defend me! Four legs and two voices. <laughs> the most delicate monster. <laughs> his forward voice is for speaking well of his friend backward voices to utter, utter foul speeches and to detract. If all the wine in my bottle will tame him, I will help his ague. 
gum. Amen. I'll pour some in my other mouth. <laughs> Stefano! Just the other mouth, call me. Mercy, mercy! This is a devil and no monster. I will run from him. I have no long spoon. Stefano! If thou be a Stefano, fetch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo. Be not a fear. Thy good friend Trinculo. If thou be a Trinculo, I'll pull thee by the lesser legs. <laughs> if any be Trinculo's legs, these are they. <laughs> thou art very Trinculo indeed. How camest thou to be the siege of this moon calf? Can he vent Trinculo's? I took him to be killed by a thunderstroke. But thou art not drowned, Stefano. I hope now thou art not drowned. Is the storm ever blown? Hit me under the dead moon calf's gabardine for fear of the storm. But thou art living, Stefano. Oh, Stefano, do Neapolitan escaped! Prithee, do not turn me about. The stomach's not constant. <laughs> <laughs> These be fine things, and if they be not sprites, that's a brave god and bear celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. How, how didst thou escape? Camest thou hither? I swear by this bottle how the camest hither. I escaped upon a butt of sack which the sailors heaved overboard. By this bottle, which I made from the bark of a tree with my own hand. <laughs> <laughs> swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject. The liquor is not earthly. Here, swear then how thou escapest. I swim ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Tis the book. Though thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. <laughs> Stefano, is there any more of this? The whole butt man. My cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, mooncalf? How dost thou go? Hast thou not drawn? Hast thou not talked from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man in the moon when time was. <laughs> I have seen the ignorant, I do advise thee. My mistress showed me. Dog in my bush. Come swear to it, kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents, swear. Now, by this good light, it's a very shallow monster. I feared of it. A very weak monster. The man in the moon. Poor, poor, credulous monster. Well drawn monster, if so. I will kiss thy foot. I swear myself thy subject. This light, the most perfidious and drunken monster. Pretty, be my lord. Come on then, down and swear. I shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster. Most oh, scurvy monster. I can find it in my heart to beat Come. it. Yes. The poor monsters in drink. An abominable monster. I'll show thee the fresh springs and I'll put thee berries. A plague upon the tyrant that I serve. I'll bear him no more sticks. Follow thee, thou wondrous man. Such a ridiculous monster to make such a wonder of a poor drunkard. <laughs> I'll show thee to where crabs go, and I'll with my long nails would dig thee pig nuts. I'll show thee the jay's nest, and instruct thee on how to catch the nimble marmoset. Will thou go with me? I prithee, lead the way without any more talking. Trinculo, the king and all our company else being drowned, we will inherit here. Here, bear my bottle. Fellow Trinculo, we'll fill him by and by again. Farewell, master. Farewell, farewell. A howling monster, a drunken monster. Van, Van, how then? As a new master, get a new man. Freedom, heyday, freedom. Freedom, heyday. Oh, brave monster, lead the way. <laughs>
He's safe for these three hours. Almost, dear mistress. The sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll set it down, I'll bury your rope while. Pray, give me that. I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious creature. I'd rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do with much more peace. For my good will is to it, and yours is against. Poor worm. Thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look wearily. No, noble mistress. Tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. <clears throat> what is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, <coughs> I broke your hats to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed, the top of admiration. Worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady I have eyed, with, with best regard, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women. Never any with so fun soul, but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed, and put it to the foil. But you, oh you, so perfect and so peerless, you are created of every creature's best. I do not know one of my sex. No woman's face remember, save from my glass my own. Nor have I seen more that I may call man than you, good friend, and my dear father. How features are abroad, I am skillless of. But by my modesty, the jewel of my dower, I would not wish any companion in the world but you. Nor can imagination form a shape beside yourself to like of. But I prattle something too wildly, and my father's precepts I there and forget. I am, in my condition, a prince, Miranda. I, I do think a king. I would not so, and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to suffer the flesh fly below my mouth. Hear my soul speak. The very instant that I saw you did my heart fly to your service. There resides, to make me slave to it, and for your sake am I this patient <coughs> log man. Do you love me? Oh, heaven, oh, earth, bear witness to this sound, and crown what I profess with kind event if I be true. If hollowly invert what best is voted me to mischief, I beyond all limit of what else in the world, who love, prize, and honor you. I'm a fool to weep of what I'm glad of. Fair encounter and too most fair affection. Heaven's right grace on that. <coughs> Wherefore weep you? At mine unworthiness, that dare not offer what I desire to give, and much less take what I shall die to want. But this is trifling, and all the more it tries to hide itself, the bigger bulk it shows. Hence, bashful cunning and taught me plain and holy innocence. I am your wife if you will marry me. If not, I'll die your maid. To be your fellow you may deny me, but I'll be your servant whether you will or no. My mistress then, and I thus humble her. <coughs> My husband then? I, with his willing, with heart as willing as bondage air of freedom. Here's my hand. And mine, with my heart in it, now farewell, till half an hour hence. A thousand thousand. So glad at this as they I cannot be. Who are surprised withal, but my rejoicing at nothing can be more. All to my book, for yet, ere supper time, must I perform much business that pertain. <laughs> Drink to me. <coughs> Servant monster? But <laughs> folly at this isle. <coughs> you say there's but five of us upon this island. But we are but three of them. They be brain like us, the state totters. Drink, sir, monster, when I bid thee. Thy eyes are almost set in thy head. <laughs> Where should they be set else? You were a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail. <laughs> Man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack. For my part, the sea cannot drown me. I swam ere I could recover the shore five and thirty leagues off and on. By this light, thou shalt be my lieutenant, monster, or my standard. And your lieutenant, if you wish. No standard. Will not run, Mr. Monster. I know my honor. Limit my shoe. Will not serve him. He's not valiant. 
Well, why is the most ignorant monster? Like the debauched fish thou? Is there ever a man a coward that shrinks so much sack as I today? He's able to tell a monstrous lie, think of a fish, <coughs> a monster. Lo, how he mocks me. Oh, don't let him. Lord. Lord, quote he, <coughs> that a monster could be such a natural. Lo, lo, again, bite him to death, I pray thee. Drink your love. Keep a good tongue in thy head. Be free of a mutineer. The next tree. This monster is my subject, and he shall not suffer in dignity. I thank my own lord. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Mary, will I repeat it? Thou will stand, and so shall Trinculo. As I told thee, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the eye. Thou liest. Who is my valiant master who would destroy thee? I do not lie. Thank you, love. Run into no further danger, for by this hand I will supplant some of your teeth. <laughs> what? I said nothing. Mom, then, and no more. Proceed. As I told thee, by sorcery you got this eye, for me you got it. But thy greatness will revenge it on thee, for I know thou darest, but this thing dare not. That's most certain. But to be lord of it, I'll serve thee. How then shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord. I yield him thee asleep, or thou mayest knock a nail into his head. Thou liest, thou canst not. But if I any this, thou scurry patch. Thy mash thinks bottle from him. He'll drink not but brine after this, for I'll not show him what a quick freshes are. Thank you, love. If you interrupt the monster one word further in his tale, by this hand, I will turn my mercy out of doors and make a stock fish of thee. Why, I said nothing, did I? I'll go further off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Take thou that. <laughs> As you like this, give me the lie another time. I did not give the lie. Your weights and bearing, too? A pox of your bottles. This can sack and drinking do. A murder on your monster, and the devil take your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> now, forward to their tail, for they stand farther up. Beat them enough. After all, I'll beat him too. Stand farther. Come. Proceed. Right. As I told thee, it is a custom with him in the afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst break him. Having first seized his books, without them he's but a sot, as am I, and hath not one spirit to command. For having first seized his books. The most, the most important thing to know about this is the beauty of his daughter. For I never saw a woman save but she in Sycorax, and she far surpasseth Sycorax, as great as thou seest. <laughs> Is it so brave, alas? I am a boy. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I will be king and queen, to save our graces. And Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? Excellent. <laughs> Give me thy hand. I am sorry I beat thee. <laughs> but while thou livest, keep a good tongue in thy head. Then the half hour will be asleep. Wilt thou destroy it then? Aye, on mine honor. This will I tell my master. Higher <laughs> lack, and I can go no further, sir. My old bones ache. Here's a base trout and deeply forthrights and meanders. By your patience, I needs must rest me. Old Lord, I cannot blame thee. Who am myself attached with weariness to the dulling of my spirits? Sit down and rest. Even here, I will put off my hope and keep it no longer from my flatterer. For he is drowned who thus we stray to find, and the sea mocks our frustrated search on land. Well, let him go. Do not, for one repulse, forego the purpose you resolve to effect. The next advantage we will take thoroughly. Let it be tonight, for now they are pressed with travel, they will not, nor cannot, use such vigilance as when they are fresh. I say tonight no more. My brother, uh, the Lord, do stay in two and do as we. You are free men of sin, who destiny that hath to instrument this lower world, and walketh in it in ever to make it see, have caused to belch up you and all this island, where men doth not inhabit. You most then, being most of I have made you better, and even with such light power, men hang in her own. You 
fools, the elements of whom your sword are tempered, may as well use the loud winds, or would be mocked at staffs, killed with still closing waters, as diminished one thousands in my blue. If you could hurt, your sword would not be massive for your strengths, and will not be a good thing. But remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from Milan did supply the good Prospero. Expose him to the sea which hath for him, him and his innocent child, for which foul deed the powers delay and not forgetting, have incensed the siege and shores, yea, all the creatures, against your peace. Be of thy son, Alonso, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me, lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend to you in your ways, whose wrath is to guard you from, which here, in this most desolate isle, all falls upon your heads, is nothing but heart sorrow, and a clear life ensuing. In the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in a strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous. Methought the billows spoke and told me of it. The wind did sing it to me, and the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ pipe, did pronounce the name of Prospero. It did base my trespass. Therefore, my son, in the ooze is bedded, and I'll search deeper than air plummet sounded, and there lie mudded with him. But one fiend at a time, I'll fight their legions or I'll be thy second. All three of them are desperate. Their great guilt, like poison given to work on it a long time after, now begins to bite the spirits. Bravely, the figure of this harpy hast thou performed, my Ariel. A grace it had, devouring. Of my instruction hast thou nothing baited in what thou hadst to say. My high charms work, and these my enemies are all knit up in their distractions. They now are in my power. And in these fits I leave them, will I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine love darling. She will outstrip all praise and make it halt behind her. I do believe it against an oracle. Then, as my rich gift, and thine own acquisition, worthily purchased, take thou my daughter. But if thou dost break before all sanctimonious ceremonies, may with full and holy right be ministered. No sweet aspersion shall the heavens let fall to make the contract grow. The barren hatred, sour eye disdain, and discord shall bestrew the union of your bed with weeds so loathly that you shall hate it both. Therefore, take heed. As I hope for quiet days, fair issue, and long life, with such love as tis now, the murkiest den, the most opportune place, the strongest suggestion our worse or genius can, shall never melt mine honor to take away that day's celebration. Barely spoke. Sit then and talk with her. She is thine own. What, Ariel? My industrious servant, Ariel. What was thy potent master? Here I am. Thou, your last servant, did worthily perform. And I must use you in such another trick. Go and bring the rabble, or whom I give thee power, here to this place, and incite them to quick motion, for I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently? Aye, with a twink. For you can say, come and go, and read twice and cry so so. Each one tripping on his toe shall be here with muff and moan. Do you love me, master? No? Dear little fellow, dear Ariel, do not approach till thou dost hear me call. Well, I can see. Look thou, be true. Do not give dalliance too much the rein. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire and the blood. Be more abstemious, or else, good night, your vow. Now, come, Ariel. Bring a corollary, rather than one of spirit. Appear, pertly. No tongue, all eyes, be silent. Rich leaves of wheat, rye, barley, 
touches oaks and peas, thy turfy mountains where live nibbling sheep, and flat meads that with stover them to keep, thy banks with pine and twilled brims, which spongy a broad thy husky trims, to make cool nymphs chase crowns. O queen of the sky, whose watery ark and messenger am I, bids thee leave these, and here on this, and with her sovereign grace, here on this grass plot, in this very place, to come and sport, for peacocks fly in Maine, a partridge series, her to entertain. Disobey the wife of Jupiter, who with thy saffron wings upon my flowers diffuses honey drops, refreshing showers, and with each end of thy blue bough does curl my bosky acres and my unshrubbed down, rich scarfed my proud earth. Why hath thy queen summoned me hither to this short grass green? A contract of true love to celebrate, and some donation freely to estate on these blessed mothers. Highest queen of state, great Juno comes. I know her by her gait. <laughs> How does my bounteous sister go with me to bless this way? that they may prosperous be and honored in marriage she. Honor, riches, marriage blessing, long continuance, and increasing hourly joy bestow upon me. Herbs increase, void and plenty, barns and garners never empty, vines and clustering bunches grown, plants with goodly birth and bone. Spring come to you at the farthest, in the very end of harvest. Scarcity and want shall shun you. This is a most majestic vision and harmoniously charming. May I be bold to think these spirits, spirits, which by mine art I have from their confines called to enact my present fancies. Let me live here ever. So rare a wondered father and a wife make this place paradise. Sweet now, silence. I had forgot the foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot is almost come. Well done, avoid, no more. <coughs> Father's in some passion that holds him strongly. Never till this day shall I can touch his anger, go to temper. You do look, my son, in a move sort, <coughs> as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels <coughs> now are ended. These are actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits, and are melted into air, into thin air. And like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, ye all which it inherit shall dissolve, and like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, I am vexed, bear with me in my weakness. My mind is troubled. If you be pleased, retire to my cell and there repose. A turn or two I'll walk to still my beating mind. We, we wish you peace. Come, with a thought, I thank the Ariel, come. Thy thoughts I cleave to. What's thy pleasure? We must prepare to meet with Caliban. I, my commander, when I presented Ceres, I thought to have told the other, but fear, lest they might anger thee. Say again, where didst thou leave these garlands? I told you, sir, they were red hot with drinking. So fun a valor that they smote the air for breathing in their faces, beat the ground for kissing of their feet, yet always bending towards their project. Then I beat my tabor, which, like unbacked colts, they pricked their ears, advanced the eyelids, lifted up their noses as they smelt music. So I charmed their ears, the calf like they, my lowing followed, through toothed briars, sharp burses, pricking gossip thorns that entered their frail shins. At last I left them, from the filthy <coughs> of the reveal and herself, and dancing up to the chin to the lake which thou there. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape, invisible, pertainest thou still. The trumpery in my house, bring it hither, for stale to catch these garlands. I go, I go. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature or nurture can never stick, on whom my pains, humanely taken, all lost, quite lost, and as with age his body uglier grows. I will plague them all, even to roar. Come, hang them on this line. Quiet down. the blind mole may not hear a footfall. You're near your cell. Oh, sir. Your fairy, she says a harmless fairy, has done little better than play the jack with us. Thou art a lost monster. Good, my lord, I say, do me thy favor still. Aye, but to lose our bottles in the pool. Thoughts on this. We're here. The case 
Stefano! Oh, Peter! Oh, worthy Stefano! Look here what we have for you. Leave it alone now, fool. It is but trash. Oh, oh, monster. We know what belongs in the frippery. Oh, King Stefano! Oh, thank you, love. Put off that gown by the tent. I will have that gown. By grace, you'll have it. Do, do. By line and level, steal. Ain't like a grace. I thank thee for that chest. <coughs> Which shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. Steal by line and level. That is an excellent passive plate. There's a garment for it. Monster! Put some wine upon your fingers and away with the rest! No, I'll have none of it. Monster, lift to your fingers. Help us to carry this away where my hogshead of wine is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go to. <laughs> Carry this. Oh, yes. This. I am this. <laughs> hey, mountain, hey. Silver, right there it goes, silver. Fury, fury. There, Tyrone, there. Hark, hark. Go charge, my goblins, as they grind their joints with dry controls, shorten up their sinews with aged strength, and more pinch spotted make let them be hunted soundly. At this hour, lie at my mercy all my enemies. Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have the air of freedom. For a little fall, and do me service. Crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. How's the day? On the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. I did say so, but first I raise the tempest. How fares the king and his followers? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge. All prisoners, sir, in the line drove it by the fence yourself, just as you left them. They cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, <clears throat> and the remainder mourning over them, room full of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly, sir, can this return to the good old Lord Gonzalo? His tears run down his beard like winter's drops from eaves of breeze. Indeed, sir, your charm so strongly works them that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, sir? <clears throat> my lord, sir, or I deem it. And mine shall. Go release them, Ariel. My charms all break, their senses all restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers. Hoped and let them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic do I here abjure. And when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Ariel, fetch me the cloak and rapier in my cell. I will this case me and myself present, as I was some time along. Quickly, Ariel, thou shalt ere long be free. Why, that night, Ariel, I shall miss thee, but yet thou shalt have freedom. So, so, to the king's ship, invisible as thou art, there shalt thou find the mariners asleep under the hatches, the master and the boatswain being awake, and force into this place, and presently I pray thee. I drink the air before me and return, or air can't spite thee. All torment, trouble, wonder, and amazement inhabit us here. Some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. Behold, <coughs> Sir King, the wronged Duke of Milan, Prospero. For more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body, and bid thee and thy company a hearty welcome. Whether thou beest here or no, or some enchanted trifle do abuse me. As late I have been, I not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and, since I saw you, the affliction of my mind amends, with which, I fear, a madness held me. 
This must crave, and if it be so, a most strange story. The Duke to my resign, and do entreat you pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospero be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine aid, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle, which will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends, all. But you, my brace of lord, were I so minded, I could here pluck his highness's crown upon thee, and justify thee traitors. This time I will tell for no tales. The devil's chief. No! For you, most noble sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth, I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which, perforce, I know thou must restore. If thou beest Prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation. How hast thou hast thou met us? When three just three hours ago we wrecked on the shore, where I lost my son. I am well for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss, and patience says his pastor too. I rather think you have not sought for help. Be soft grace, for the like loss. I have her sovereign aid and rest, myself content. You the like loss? As dear, great to me as late, and supportable to make the dear loss, have I mean much weaker than you, your false company is. For I have lost my daughter. A daughter? Oh heavens, that they were living in Naples together. <coughs> the, queen, the king and queen there, that they were. I wish myself fly mudded with my son. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. I perceive these lords, at this encounter, do so much admire that they devour their reason and scarce think their eyes do off to the truth, their words are natural breath. But howsoever you have been justly from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospero, that very duke that was thrust of Milan, who most strangely in this shore where you were wrecked was landed to be the lord on it. Pray you, look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with as good a thing. At least bring forth a wonder to content ye as much as me, my dukedom. If this be a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Now all the blessings of a glad father encompass thee. Arise, and say how thou camest here. How many goodly creatures are there here? Oh, brave new world with such people in it. Tis new to thee. What is this maid with who thou is a play? Your oldest acquaintance here cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that has severed us, and thus brought us together? Sir, she is mortal. But by immortal providence, she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. For she is the daughter of the famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often I have heard renowned, but never seen before, of whom I have received a second life, and a second father this lady makes me to him. I am hers, but oh, how oddly it must sound that I must ask my child forgiveness. There, sir, stop. Let us not burthen our remembrance with the heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, or should have spoke ere thus. Look down, and on this blessed couple drop a crown. For it is you that have dropped forth the way which has brought us hither. I say, amen, Gonzalo. Was Milan, thrust from Milan, that his issue should become kings of Naples? Or rejoice beyond a common joy, and sit it down with gold on lasting pillars? For in one voice, to declare about her husband find it Tunis. Ferdinand, a wife, when he was lost. Prospero, a dukedom on a poor isle. And all of us ourselves, when no man was his own. Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace the heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Look, sir, look, sir, here is more of us. I prophesied, if there was but a gallows on land, this fellow would not drown. Why not, sir? What's the news? The best news is, we have safely found our king and company. The next, our ship, which for three glasses since we gave up split, it's tight, and ye are, and bravely rich, as when we first set out to sea. Sir, all this service have I done since I went. My tricksy spirit. These things are not of nature. They strengthen from strange to stranger. Say, hello, came hither. If I did think, sir, I would well awake, I would strive to tell you. We were dead of sleep, and how we know not. All clapped under hatches, and, uh, where, wait, even now, with strange and several noises, of roaring, howling, shrieking, jingling chains, and more diversity of sound, all horrible were we awoken, straight away at liberty, where we, in all her trim, freshly beheld our royal, good, and gallant ship. 
on a trice. So please, even in the dream, we're redivided from them and we're brought moping hither. Was it well done? Bravely, my diligence. Thou shalt be free. This is a strange amaze as I remain trod. And in this business, there is more than nature is conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not infest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. I pick leisure, which shall be shortly. Single, I'll resolve you. Each these happened accidents. Till then, be cheerful, and think of each thing well. Come hither, spirit. Set Caliban and his companions free. Untie the spell. My gracious lord, there are yet missing of your company, some few odd lads that you remember not. <laughs> <laughs> Every man shift for all the rest, and let no man take care for himself, for all is but fortune. Coraggio, bully monster, coraggio. These be true spies, which I wear in my head. There's a goodly sight. <clears throat> no sight of us. These be brave spirits indeed. Find my masters, I am afraid you will chance to hurt me. What things be, are these, my lord, you tell me? money buy them? Very like. One of them is a plain fish, no doubt marketable. <laughs> <laughs> these three have robbed me. And this demi devil has fought it with them to take my luck. These two, fellows, you must know and own. This thing of darkness. Acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. <laughs> Is not this Stefano, my drunken butler? He's struck down. Where have you wine? And reeling right this trinculo. Where hast thou found this liquor that hath killed of thee? How camest thou in this pickle? In such a pickle since I saw you last. <laughs> I fear me. Never out of my bones. I will not fear fly alone. Why, how not Stefano? Pretty, touch me not. I am not Stefano, but a cramp. You'd be king of the isles, sirrah. That would be a sore one, then. <laughs> this is the strangest thing I ever looked upon. He is as disproportionate in his manners as in his shape. Go, sirrah, to my cell and take this pain and give you. As you look to have my pardon, trim it handsomely. That I will, and I'll be wise hereafter. What a thrice-double ass was I to take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. <laughs> Go, to away. Hence, and bestow your luggage where you found it. Or oh, stole it, rather. I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall have your rest for this one night, which, part of it, I'll waste with such discourse as, no doubt, make it quick go away. Then, in the morn, I'll take you to your ship, and thence to Naples, where I have hoped to see the the nuptial of these are dear beloved solemnized. And then retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear your life story, and which must hit the ear stranger. <coughs> I'll deliver all, and promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and such sail as shall take your fleet far off. Burial, that is thy charge. Then, the elements. Be free. Fare thou well. Now my charms are all o'erthrown, and what strength I have is mine own, which is most faint now, tis true. I must be here confined by you, or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got, and pardon the deceiver, well, in this bare island by your spell, but release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours, my sails must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardon me, let your indulgence set me free.
opposite direction. Alright, full casting crew, give them one more bow. Have a good evening, everyone.